So it's a rainy morning right here in northern Indiana and uh, I'm really interested this morning in information that comes from probably the most boring sources of information. Uh, you would think that things like newspaper advertisements or inventories um, are just intensely boring. They certainly are boring to sort of put together today. We have to do a lot but with business. We have to do a lot of things like inventory. And basically you do those things, you do the calculations, and then you're done. Then all that matters is the number and you take all those papers and you just sort of shove them in the file. You don't really care about the inventory later on. But um, 100 years later or 200 years later, it gets really, really fascinating to look at these things. And one of the great inf pieces of information, if you're studying a household in the 18th century, especially one that's a little more well-to-do, one of the great places of information is household inventories that happen on, say, the, uh, the person's death. Um, whenever there's sort of an estate problem, um, especially if anybody is in debt uh, in, in a household, when that person dies, the, the, the state has to know exactly what everything is worth so they can disperse these funds. And so they, they, in the 18th century, 19th century, they would inventory the house. They would go through the room, room by room, and write down every single thing that was in that room, possibly what it was worth, down to the closet. What's in this closet? What's in that closet? That is totally fascinating when you're trying to to reconstruct these people's lives 100 years later, 200 years later, 300 years later. So really, really fascinating. We don't have as much of that for the deep frontier. Nobody's taking household inventories on somebody's house that isn't a deep frontier. And it really isn't worth anything. They weren't recording that. But one of the information, one of the, some of the information we do find are inventories of trading stations. So 30 miles that way is Fort Wayne. And Fort Wayne was a trading station at various times in the 18th century. And uh, it becomes a, becomes a fort again in 1793 when General Wayne comes through this area. Um, he establishes a fort at Fort Wayne. That kind of falls into decay, but a few years later they rebuild that and there's a trading station at that spot. In 1811, they do the inventory of the Fort Wayne trading station and we have that inventory available to us today. Totally fascinating. What's, what's there? That's a great information. What's not in the inventory? Again, really, really good information. And the other thing we've got is what these things were worth, at least relative to each other. Totally fascinating. Let me tell you about some of the things that were in the trading station at Fort Wayne in 1811. It was chock full. This warehouse was chock full of fabric of lots of different kinds. Um, fancy fabrics, cotton fabrics, printed fabrics, wool. Uh, some of the most expensive was like scarlet. This one fabric that was called, what was it called? Um, swan skin. Isn't that, isn't that a great um, sort of uh, description of a fabric? It was apparently like flannel. So scarlet swan skin, probably the most expensive. Um, but they also had threads, needles, pins, um, buttons of all kinds of sorts so that you could make your own clothing. They had completed clothing. So they had shawls, bandanas, silk neckerchiefs, stockings, long and short. Uh, they had felt hats. And very, very interesting, they had felt hat covers. In rain like this, if you wear your felt hat, it can be ruined by the weather. It loses its shape, it needs to be reblocked. Uh, one of the ways you can protect your hat is by having an oil cloth hat cover. They had those in the inventory here in this frontier uh, trading post. They also had moccasins and shoes. So moccasins cost about 25 cents, or at least um, it costs the trading post about 25 cents. Shoes, $1.10. They also had calico shirts. Now calico may have meant printed, it may just have been a weight of fabric, but calico shirts, $1.25. So about the same price as a pair of shoes. They had wool blankets and of various different sizes. They're a, th a three point wool blanket, probably just basically a one man blanket, $4. They had lots of horse equipment, uh, bridles, reins, saddle bags, etc. I didn't see any saddles, but I'd probably have to go through it. There might be, they might be there. Um, they had guns. 
So they had rifles, about a twelve fifty a piece. Of course, they had all the things that would have to go with a rifle, shot, powder, flints, gun tools, gun parts. Uh, they had belt knives, pocket knives, and tomahawks. So a belt knife might cost you 17 cents, tomahawk, 67 cents. Cooking utensils, uh, tin kettles, uh, sheet steel kettles, some with lids, some without. They had pudding pans. Not sure exactly what they meant by a pudding pan. Knives and forks, teaspoons, pewter teaspoons, two cents a piece. Uh, hands tools. So they had hand saws, pit saws. If you wanted to make your own boards, you needed this great big long saw with the handle on each side. You'd dig a pit, put these board uh, logs up there, and you'd saw them up. Uh, they had pit saws for $4. A hand saw just cost you $1.25. They had axes. They had um, augers, files, grindstone. That was expensive. $8. They just had one grindstone. Maybe that, that was a tool there at the trading station so people could come and sharpen their tools. Uh, they had a spinning wheel, 325 or 350. They had, if they had these tools, they have some building supplies. They got nails, they have wire, and window glass. Yeah, they had a stock of window glass. The biggest piece, 8 by 10. Uh, let's see, raw iron, they had bar, uh, bar iron, they had German steel, blister steel beeswax they had soap they had tobacco um quills so if you they had writing supplies they had quills inkwells ink and paper they had food materials so um, most of what's listed here is just spices they did have indian sugar which was like crystallized maple sugar now they had tallow and they had let's see allspice cinnamon cloves so cloves they had listed at 87 cents a pound they had nutmeg yeah in the frontier deep frontier fort wayne 1811 nutmeg three dollars a pound and even more expensive mace at seven dollars a pound they had beaver traps they had jewelry of course uh, many of these things being traded to the native americans uh, they were interested in jewelry they had trade silver brooches and gorgets um, they had beads, they had things like ivory combs and horn combs. So you'd have an ivory comb that might cost you 25 cents and a horn comb, three cents. Uh, they had mirrors, razors, scissors, spectacles at 16 cents a piece or pair and fish hooks. All the things you need for daily life, right? fascinating piece of information. I'm so glad that something like this stayed in the records and we have that available to us today. <laughs> I love digging into history and finding these little nuggets of information about what the daily life was like for regular people in the 18th century. It's easy to figure out, you know, what a general's life was like or a president, but what's it like for the regular guy? So fascinating to dig through these something as boring as an inventory. I love digging back into history like this. And part of, you know, digging back into it is doing it. We have a lot of fun sort of practicing history in real life. That is uh, fascinating to experience it like that. So I want to encourage you to dig into history. And if you've got an idea for, uh, you know, a piece of information, a something that might be considered boring, one of the great ones in the 18th century in a city life, looking at newspaper advertisements. Totally, totally fascinating. <laughs> I want to thank you for all your great encouragement on this channel and all your wonderful support. Thank you for everything you do and thanks for watching.